Welcome to the Book Club Life. I'm your host, Jenny Snow, and I cannot believe I get to bring you Laura Brands. <laughs> um, if you don't know Laura, she is a many times uh, Carol finalist. Have you won a Carol Award? No, just okay. final. Yeah. Multi-finalist, but she's a winner of the Christie <laughs> Award and also one of the names that comes up the most uh, among readers just talking about our favorite oh. authors so beloved everybody has so much to say and also i have to say mm -hmm. a lot of authors bring up laura as their inspiration um, she's so generous with her encouragement mm -hmm. and um but the reason i brought her here today um is that she is one of my top favorite authors you're on my oh, favorite shelf more than I'm one book so of yours. honored <laughs> Um, I've loved you forever, and it's a dream come true to be able to sit with you today and to meet her. I got to meet her face to face yesterday. And it's been over a decade uh, in the waiting. I know. And who would have thought we'd be sitting here on the beautiful Mississippi River <sighs> in Minnesota, no, no less. I know. So we're at the Mississippi River Readers Retreat. And uh, mm -hmm. as she said, on the Mississippi River. So, um, so that's how I know Laura. But before we begin... Um, and we're, we're here today to talk about um, Love's Reckoning, and it was a really hard choice of which book to choose. I could choose the first book that made me fall in love with Laura France, which was Courting Morrow Little. Mm -hmm. I saw it in the library. I thought, this is interesting. <laughs> and I loved it so much, I wrote her name on a sticky note and stuck it to my library shelf. Oh, I love that little bag story. <laughs> That's before the days of Goodreads. Um, and I'm a spotty Goodreads user anyway. But um, so I knew I wanted to look her up and read anything that she wrote. And I've read every single one of her books. But I chose Love's Reckoning um, just because it's it's like a movie. I, like it's so gripping. Um, it's a masterpiece, really. And so if you're looking for a Christmas gift for yourself or for the reader in your life, I would go with this one. Um, it is a series and um, you're going to fall in love with the writing. Um, with the story, with the characters. It's so good. You've chosen um, well. Thank, thank you. you. And my friend was like, you have to do Love's Reckoning. No other will do. <laughs> and thank you to that friend, too. Oh, it's, it's also one of my favorite covers, so it yes, means a lot so to beautiful. me. Um, yes, so beautiful. Yeah. Oh the amazing Brandon Hill yes. shot that in Seattle. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, tell us a little bit about the book and just a little bit about yourself as a person. Well, the novel opens with uh, kind of a cozy, intimate scene on a quite a dysfunctional Pennsylvania family. And I literally began the novel um, pitting two sisters against each other. You know, it's uh, you have the very uh, innocent, fair Eden. She's like her name. And then you have Elspeth, her sister. So the plot revolves around these two young unmarried women in this, like I said, highly um, conflicted family. And her, their father, Liege is a master blacksmith. And in, in that era, the 18th century, um, the apprentice blacksmith often married into the master's blacksmith's family. So when I discovered that in research, you know, often you get this little gem, this little nugget while you're researching it, and it carries the entire novel. And that's what happened when I made Silas Valentine, the hero in Love's Reckoning, uh, come up on, on the scene. I think it's in, he's struggling across a snowy field in chapter mm -hmm. two, and he's on his way to the, the Lee household to become their blacksmith's apprentice. And the story just unfolds, unfolds from there. From there. Um, so we're going to start. Uh, well, and then tell us, are you married, kids? Yeah, me? Oh, yes. Actually, don't tell us yet, because I'm going <laughs> to ask my first question, and then you can oh, weave great. that into okay, it. Okay, great. Um, so one thing I liked about the novel, sometimes in a novel, there will be little just quotes of poetry mm -hmm. or little things that kind of give a little a little hint or just a little something about the chapter mm -hmm. to come. Sometimes in books, they just seem like they just were tacked on. But these mm -hmm. were so like, um, I don't know, just really magical Tune and really to the fit. Story. Yeah, you, I, yeah, I can tell you really search for just the perfect little bit. And I noticed a lot of them were from Samuel Johnson. So uh, in chapter 20, the beginning was every path has its puddle. <laughs> and I would like to ask about your path to becoming an author. And can you tell us a little bit about that and some of the puddles as well as, you know. Oh, I love the way you phrase story. that. Lots of puddles. But the Lord redeems those. He dries those up and, <laughs> and brings <laughs> lots of blessing for those puddles. Um, I, for those who follow me, you're probably going to get tired of me saying 
Um, I did not want to publish. Uh, it was not my dream or my goal, but the Lord instilled a little seven-year-old girl with the gift or the desire of writing. It's not anything I could work up on my own. I couldn't teach writing class because honestly, I don't know how it's done. I just sit down and I do it. And I've been doing stories since age seven, since I learned to read. And my go-to books at the little library when I was you know, in second grade were the um, little historical biographies of mm. like Dolly Madison, Daniel Boone, Pocahontas, okay. I devoured everything. I remember standing in my elementary library, you know, age seven, crushed when I had read through all the historical fiction. And I wasn't even a rereader back then. <clears throat> I um, thought basically, if I can't find any more to read, I'll just start writing. How many of us do that? When we wow. can't find the book on the shelf, we write the one we wish we could. And that is where my writing career began. Now, my bring my husband, dear, long-suffering Randy. He's been married 29 years now. He's just, I model all my heroes after him. He is a man of um, deep integrity. He's a godly man. And he didn't know I was writing when we got married. Really? Yes, it was. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> it was such a secret. I was such a closet writer. I thought, you know, well, it's just a hobby. Actually, I, I get somewhat... Uh, not offended. I'm hard to offend, but when people call it a hobby or say, oh, you're sweet stories, that's not how I see it. Yeah. Um, it's a passion or calling. It's something that uh, I can forget to eat and sleep when I write. I can't do that wow. with anything else. So from a very young age, I knew it was very special that I felt special or different uh, as I was writing before I even had the words, you know, as a child to understand what that meant. So it's, it's a gift. So my husband didn't know, and I didn't think anything would come of it. And my brother, who is a pastor and has been on the mission field for 30 years, mm -hmm. challenged me and actually flew out. I think he was in Ecuador wow. at the time, flew um, in and I had been typing, typing it. And um, he helped me correct and format on a computer. And he challenged me to publish. Well, I didn't want to do it. And I, but I did it. I went through the Writer's Edge, which still exists. If you're looking for okay. a place to start, go to the Writer's Edge. You'll find several published novelists, not just me. So is that a online it's, publication? It's right, an online right. publication. I think you pay a very small fee to apply. And what they do, the Writer's Edge, is they, if they accept your manuscript, then it's fed into the publishing houses. So okay. it's kind of a clearinghouse for Christian fiction. I, I believe it's only Christian fiction, but I might be wrong now. It's That, that was back in 2007. Okay. Well, so I thought, you know, I don't have an agent. I've never been to a writing conference. I just wrote. You know, I didn't have any contacts. I didn't even have a computer at that point. Lived in the woods, no internet connection. So I thought, you know, I'm going to show my brother, this brother of mine who's dared me to do this, that it just can't be done. Well, God had other plans. <laughs> you know, the Lord often upends us, surprises us, and then delights us by opening the door. So within a week after the Writer's Edge went live with my first three chapters of The Frontiersman's Daughter, which was my debut novel back in 2009, I was contacted by several publishing houses. And immediately I got the deer in headlights look and didn't want to proceed and just too much too it was overwhelming. too much i it was not what i had thought would happen i mm -hmm. thought nobody would be interested um but that was not what happened so long story short and i got a three book contract i thought you know okay i'll give them the frontiersman dot's daughter and that's be the end of it and i'll just go on my merry reclusive way in the woods but they wanted three books not one and I realized then, oh, wow. yeah, oh, me too, <laughs> me too. I'm so sorry, Lord. I repent of my, you know, wanting to stay uh, in the dark, you know, and and not share your gift. If I guess my encouragement would be if you have a gift, and this is not something that I can work up. This is a gift. I, um, I just am obedient to the gift. I, and I have to repent of my attitude many times, you know, with the a little bit of publicity we get, you know, it's not, we're not JK Rowling by any stretch, but um, with with all the things that come with that, you know, you're a, become somewhat of a public figure when you write, 
you know, you're exposed to all kinds of reviews and, um, but also lots of opportunities like sitting there with a very delightful Jenny on her podcast. Do you take the good and the bad? Because that's just a part of life. That's what comes with the gift. <laughs> yeah, that's a puddle. Some are big puddles, some are small puddles, but you just trust that he has a plan. And I have begun to see as I move into the grandparenting season of life and my children are no longer children that um, I look forward to hearing your words, hopefully well done, good and faithful servant. Because my fear back then had been if you went to, you know, met your savior face to face and you had wasted or squandered the gift you gave you, you know, what, what do we you didn't want to be the servant who buried. The no, palace. we did not. And like yeah. my brother who had challenged me, 15 or 20 years ago, you know, don't hide your light under a, under a basket and you got to let it shine. He was ways ahead of me spiritually. And um, I'm so grateful for my brother. He's just, if not for Chris. So listen to the encouragers in your life and the challengers. You know, it, the Lord uses them to uh, in your journey. So that was leaping over the puddle for me. And I'm so thankful that I did that. I feel a deep contentment. And my life is so rich, enriched. If I had not obeyed, that would have been a desert. Um, please excuse the train in the background. Um, <laughs> I live on Minnesota <laughs> ambiance. <Yes. laughs> um, okay, so this next quote uh, just kind of made me laugh, yeah. and um, it has a little bit of a Pride and Prejudice ring to it, uh, oh, even though it's very different. Nice. <laughs> very different. <laughs> But uh, one of the chapter uh, quotes at the beginning were, uh, much may be made of a Scotchman if he be caught young. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite ever. <laughs> that just made me laugh. So I wanted to ask you, did you marry young? Were you young yeah. when you married? Was no. your husband young? Hold on, I'm, I have a whole oh, slew of questions oh, for you. Okay. And you just pick the ones that you want. Okay. But uh, so I want you to talk about marriage. How did y'all meet? Um, how have you changed? Were you successful in making much of each other? And um, I also definitely want to ask you, what is your best marriage advice that has helped you in your own marriage? Um, Whether someone told it to you or you just came to a realization. Um, oh, so. such good questions, deep, insightful questions. So I'll try to make this brief. Our, our love story personally belongs in a novel. I had flown out in college to different national parks to work, which is a story in themselves. I love doing that. My parents were involved in the national parks hospitality industry. I was raised on um, at Mammoth Cave National Park on the grounds where my father uh, was the manager. Anyway, so I used to work at different national parks. And one uh, summer, this Kentucky girl decided, you know, well, I'll fly to uh, Washington State. Never been there, but the opening came. I could be a waitress in this very historic Lake Crescent Lodge on beautiful Lake Crescent. Um, there were several historic lodges there, and that's the one I ended up at. Well, my husband was working at Log Cabin Resort across the lake, but he was quite a bit younger than me. Oh, so yes, okay. this is like um, a May, December romance in reverse. Okay. <laughs> so I, uh, but I was traditional enough, you know, being a Kentuckian, the Bible Belt, we just, you know, May, December doesn't work if it's in reverse. So I, but there was an instant attraction and connection there. And so I, um, you know, we saw each other. It was just quite platonic, but there was just this, passionate um, connection there, you know, that I just didn't know what to do with. And I couldn't get over the age gap. So do you care if I ask how many years younger? None. Nine, Nine years. Younger. years. Okay. Yeah. But I'm loving it now because people think he's older. He's getting a little gray. Yes. <laughs> so it's, so, and it's, you know, when he's not using skincare yeah, products. There you to go. Keep yeah, there you go. So <laughs> what I did, because I panicked, I decided I can't deal with this. I need to move away. So I moved away for seven years. Oh my goodness. It's Laura. kind of, the, yeah, it's seven it's, and seven. I'm, I don't want to make too much of it, but seven, I had my best birthday ever at age seven and seven is numerically important in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's interesting. So and I moved away. Day, God rest yeah. So I moved away for seven years and had no contact with him and didn't want any contact with him. Did you think about him? Oh yes. All the time. And but couldn't put that um, just couldn't overcome. You know, he was a small town boy. He was not traveled. He 
was not college educated, although he had gone to college one week after seven years. But um, I just ticked all these wrong boxes off in right. my mind. But um, so in, after seven years, I got a letter from him out of the blue. So there, it, it is. I need to work oh that into a God. novel. So I you know, didn't even want to open the letter. And here was this, I don't want to say he's uneducated. He's a very smart man in many ways. But he wrote this very humble letter saying he had not been able to forget me and it had been seven years. Where was I and what was I doing? And would I ever consider him that wow. he that he had had other relationships, but the measuring stick was always Laura for you, some reason. And nobody measured up. And, and the same for him. I, the standard? Yes. Yeah, so I thought, you know, that was a God connection because we were both believers. And so I decided, why not? So there you go. That's and so cool. Yeah, not, he was young. I was not. <laughs> So I, I, he was 24 when we got married. I think I was 33. Is that, I'm oh, terrible at math. Oh, that's not that bad. That doesn't sound bad at all. No. In uh, fact, I have other friends yeah. who uh, the wife is older. Really? Yes, I do. So that makes me uh, feel better. <laughs> <laughs> my, my sons laugh because I guess there's a word in popular terminology or vocabulary today called a cougar. Yes. I don't like that word. <laughs> I Because I'm very modest and um, biblically based and I... But it's funny because... Y'all are just destined for each other. Well, and on the thing about yeah. education, there's different kinds of education. Some yes. very educated people uh, have no logic yeah. and they've just ingested yes. a book, but well, it's not full of wisdom. Exactly. <laughs> and you're better together. I mean, he paired me with a man that I see now looking back. He's just so full of integrity. And like I said before, I based my heroes on Randy. Yeah. And he is Your my... Your heroes are all so honorable. They and are. I just love them. And I thank you. I try and I, I confess to liking my heroes better than my heroes, hands down. So, and I like my villains too, but we won't go there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or will we? We'll yeah, <laughs> that's right. Oh, <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Yeah. You go first. Oh, advice. Here's oh, a, yes. a very important piece of advice that I've learned after many years of marriage is um, there are seasons, there are very... Uh, happy, fruitful seasons in marriage. Mm. And there are some very hard seasons. And I would encourage you if you're going through a hard season to weather it mm. and look for the good in your spouse and the good in your relationship because uh, the devil who is a destroyer, mm -hmm. uh, wants to blind you to all the good that God is right. doing in your life. And sometimes God's best work is done in the puddles and yes. the hard desert places. So right. there are a couple of times, I'll be honest here, that I wanted to quit. I wanted to throw in the towel and give up marriage. It was too difficult. And, you know, lots of varying circumstances, yeah. you know, external and internal. Right. And But a lot of that has to do with where you are spiritually. Yeah. Uh, and I was in a dry place the couple of times that I was like, this is too hard, Lord. I just... I'm tired. I, I don't want to do mm. this. And I tell you, we, it's like a roller coaster. If you get, just get past that, right. more fruitful, thriving seasons will come for you as a couple and you will be so much richer and stronger together than you ever would on your, you know, on mm. your own. If you both love the Lord and, um, are in a healthy marriage. Right. Um, very important. Just, just stay the course, That's you know, really wise. Yeah. I remember somebody told me once, um, that just because you're married doesn't mean you're never going to be lonely. Right. And there are going to be hard seasons, whether you're single or married. And yes. the key is to look to the Lord, ask for help and pray yes. through it. One thing that, um, has helped me a lot when I'm just really upset is mm -hmm. number one prayer. You know, God and changes ask. people. Change Such him an and change me. Just <laughs> change make us what us you both. want us to be. Right. Um, and and then I ask to mm. help me see Lord from his perspective. Oh, and beautiful. help me see help him to see from my perspective. Because sometimes just putting on their beautiful. eyes and their life, you know, just because we're blinded oftentimes. Yes. Right. And sometimes we put motives onto people that was not their motive at all you know right. they came at it so innocently exactly. and then there are going to be true real hurts yes with both of you you know mm -hmm. you're both going to hurt the other and so forgiveness right. and i just love what you said weather the storm yes. don't give up no get through the storm there's beauty on the other there's, side oh so well said amen okay um 
So a quote that stuck out to me, um, so Silas is a fiddle player. Yes. And um, Eden sees him playing and hears it. His fiddle is on fire, she thought. She wanted to say so, yet didn't want to rob them of the joy of that discovery. So I guess he was practicing oh. before he was going to play. Okay. And I just thought, that's how I think about you. Oh. <laughs> um, that's how I think about Laura France is mm -hmm. when I give a Laura France book to someone, I know they're going to love it. And I try not to say oh. hardly anything about it. I just mm. give it to no them. Spoilers. No that's spoilers. No so spoilers. Nice. Oh, no. No. The don't even like if a book mm -hmm. has a twist in it, I don't even like to tell anybody yeah. because then they're looking for it. And I just want them right. to have the total discovery. Oh, which fits um, you beautifully, you and Eden, right? Yes. The joy of discovery. Um, but I do mm -hmm. tell people about the book. Like, you've got to read Laura <laughs> France. Word of mouth is um, the most important yes. thing. Yes. So with that, there's another quote that's kind of related to that on the opposite mm -hmm. side. So I'm going to read it and then ask you your question. Mm -hmm. Coveting always makes one poor, Mama said. And I loved that quote. And I thought, yes, mm -hmm. it does. When you covet what someone else has, not only does yeah. it make you poor because you're pining after those riches, right. but it also steals your joy um, for what you do have. Yes. And so I wanted to ask you, being an author in the author life where um, there's reviews, there's lists, there's comparisons, awards. Mm -hmm. um, so even though you're so accomplished, do you ever struggle with jealousy? And what is your strategy for starving jealousy, but growing uh, love? Love how you say In writing or life. Starving jealousy. Because, you know, anytime you, you do something and you're gifted with something, there's going to be a, a certain level of competition. Um, it's been a, I've never been competitive about anything. I was the last pick for teams. I was <laughs> not good at really anything but writing. So writing to me um, has brought out that kind of competitive strength. But uh, Jenny used an important word, ask. You go and ask the Father and God mm. who knows us. That he knows all about the world we live in way more than we do. He knows about, you know, every emotion we have. I do struggle. There's also an imposter syndrome that I feel when I read authors, especially um, the masters of the past, like George MacDonald and Elizabeth Gouge, who's my current literary obsession. You compare yourself with them. Um, don't do that because God has gifted you uh, with a unique voice and a unique time to mm. do what you're supposed to do. And it fits somehow in his scheme of things for the betterment of you and for the people you bless. So I remind myself, Lord, you didn't make me Elizabeth Gouge or Julie Classen or Joanne Bischoff or Lori Benton. You made me Laura France with her strengths and her weaknesses. And um, but I will say I'm I'm not a big contest fan. I know that lots of people are. I don't ever enter a contest. And my publisher has entered me in some. But I so well, I I'm glad they've yeah. entered you because it's so, oh. I got to see you win the Christie Award oh, and it was so, that was I was like tears in my eyes. <laughs> oh, I was so from well, home. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I will say, though, that was a very that was for um, the lace maker. By yeah, the way. right. Back in I think it was 2018, 2019. I can't remember, but I'm very I love that award. It sits in my office window and I'm very grateful for that. And I do think um, competitions and awards are especially helpful for new writers because it helps mm -hmm. expose yes. them and they have feedback. It's it's a wonderful tool for that. For me, it it um, it's hard for me, so I don't go there, but I'm glad my publisher sees enough beauty in my work that they will sometimes submit something to an award. And I'm very grateful for my Christie. I said once I won, if I ever won the Christie, I would retire. Oh from my writing. gosh! <laughs> so I know, I know. That was a few years ago. So we're not doing that. Oh. I um, that was kind of the what is that word penultimate? I can't remember what the definition is, but um, that was kind of the pinnacle for me. Pinnacle. And when I just remember God's gifted me with a unique voice, and I'm not to look around right. um, and mm. just just attend to the task and focus on what He's That's given good. me, and quote scriptures aloud. Sometimes when I'm in the thick of the battle. I will literally, Chuck Swindle taught me this, um, you quote scripture loud, you know, and the devil will flee, just like it mm -hmm. did Jesus in the desert. Very powerful to use words yeah. to as protection and um, mm -hmm. as defense, yeah. as we know, you know. That's good. Yes. Um, well, you said something once that helped me. 
um, just with the pressure that you put on yourself. And I don't remember if it was in a podcast or a blog or just overhearing you. I guess I wouldn't have overheard you because (laughs) we weren't together. Right. But you said somebody was saying something about being the best. And you said, oh, I'm not the best. Mm -hmm. Um, And just like, I was like, I don't need to try to be the best. I just need to do the best I can and not worry about it. So if Laura France doesn't think she's the best. No, no, Laura uh, has no illusions. (laughs) I was trained in. Come at it humbly (laughs) and just do your best and move on. That's and then right. whenever that for me, whenever those jealous feelings come up, I like what you said yeah. about quoting scripture and the yes. scripture that says love does not envy. So right. you can just be like, no, love does not right. envy. And that's and a, now I'm going to go do something. Loving. I'm going to go comment yes. on somebody there else's you thing. Go. Leave a great review. Leave just, some yes. encouragement. Thank you. You I get a lot of uh, you slay the envy competitive dragon by encouragement and lifting somebody else up right. and praying for Oh, that's good. Um, praying for those that you might be envying, because if you pray for somebody, it somehow spiritually breaks down. Yeah, that you can't pray for an enemy or pray for somebody that you're in. Right, you um, care about them. You care and then about you're rooting them. for them. Exactly. And, like, good job. Yeah. and it removes that awful feeling or um, barrier you have. So well, thank you for sharing so candidly about that. Oh. I really appreciate. Well, that. I think it's a, something we struggle <clears throat> all struggle with, oh, no yeah. matter if you're a writer or not. Yes, yes. whether you're, you know, a right. coffee shop owner or right. whatever it is Content that you do, creator. your work. You know, you right. want to be, you want your work to be recognized, and that's yes. just a natural thing. And the nice mm-hmm. thing is that, you know, the Lord does see, and uh, yes. He does see. So even if nobody else does. Um, I, I personally love knowing that, um, God sees my, whatever it was. Yes. And he's the only Um, one that matters. Exactly. In the end. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, in, um, oh, I keep forgetting to mention, um, and very important things. Oh, so I think you're doing Laura has, um, offered a giveaway for one of our readers. So check the show Mm -hmm. notes or go to jennysnow.net and uh, click on Laura's uh, spots. And if you're enjoying the interview, would you mind uh, giving us a like if you're watching Mm -hmm. on YouTube and subscribe to the show, or maybe even consider leaving a review on the podcast. That would be great. Mm -hmm. It helps other people to find the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, At least that's what I'm told. Um, and we have there, I have some, a huge announcement coming at the end. So exciting. Um, it's so huge. (laughs) So you definitely want to stick around for that. Um, and let's see here. Okay. So we have one more serious question that we're going to get to some just for fun things. Oh, fine. And Laura has agreed also to do a spoiler edition for my mm-hmm. Patreon people. So thank you so mm-hmm. much for those that support the show with financial blessing. Mm-hmm. You totally don't have to. I totally understand. But just mm-hmm. if you have a little extra and want to be a patron of the show, um, mm-hmm. that's one of the benefits that you get is just extra little spoiler editions. Yeah. So um, fun. But back to something that we all get to hear. And I'm really curious mm-hmm. as to your answer. Um, So one more serious question, Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll move on to the just for fun. Okay. Okay. So in the book, Love's Reckoning, Eden Mm -hmm. goes through a lot. Um, You know, she doesn't, um, she's not in just a real caring, wonderful, idyllic family. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's Mm -hmm. a quote in there. I don't even remember who said it, but it's also actually a Bible verse. And it says, the Lord will fight for you. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would like to know um, in life, just like in the novel, sometimes Mm -hmm. we go through situations that are so hard that we don't know how to deal with it and we just need the Lord to fight for us. So can you tell Mm -hmm. us of a time where you were unfairly treated um, and the Lord defended you or showed you what to do or just gave you a way through or a way out or how did you face that hard thing? such a good question. I think it would be in high school. I had a new stepfather. My father had left after 20 years of marriage. My mother Mm. uh, waited a few years to remarry and then married actually her high school, uh, a man who had asked her out in high school. She met him at a reunion um, years later and she ended up marrying him and they had a very happy marriage, which was wonderful to see. But I was somewhat isolated in high school because I had a new stepfather. Um, We had moved. And so all my roots kind of were torn up Mm. and taken away. And I have my old journals I was going through about a year ago. And I was reading, it was like you're reading about somebody else. I was reading about this young girl, formative ages, 16, 17, 18. I I was, you know, I I was actually bullied. I was popular in a sense. I, I wore glasses. I was the book nerd. 
people left me alone. I was pleasant, uh, probably boring. And so I wasn't bullied in high school, but I was bullied at work. I worked at the hmm. second leading selling Baskin Robbins in the nation. Wow. It was in Lexington, Kentucky, and I was bullied at work. I didn't ever think in terms of that, but when I read my journals, I could see that I was being bullied, uh, mm. but I didn't have a word for it. It wasn't right. popular back then. Um, it wasn't trending. And I I remember the Lord, uh, you know, I was flailing and floundering. I had accepted Christ at age 12. And so this was a few years into that spiritual journey. But so bullied at work, new stepfather at home that was not a pleasant man. He was like sandpaper, 40 grit, mm. my husband would say. And just a horrible, it was just excruciating that the Lord gave me an out. I see now with my writing. Mm. I was, and he provided a typewriter. I, this was in the days where, you know, right before the internet and laptop and all that, uh, he provided me with a beautiful new room in this house, you know, home. And, um, I just wrote. I wrote when I wasn't wow. at work and wasn't at school. I wrote for hours and hours and hours. It was the story that would come courting Mara Little. Oh my goodness. Which had, you know, I, I sat on that story. She for, had some issues there. She, and, yes. And as much as you wouldn't want to go through it, I know, right. I'm sure you were able to use those right. feelings and treatments. Exactly. The, in your the, story. the bullying and the, um, just the feeling of the extreme loneliness, which you mentioned earlier. And, feeling like I didn't belong, you know, even in my own family. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me the writing gift really uh, flamed then. And I remember my happiest memories are sitting in my, this beautiful room my mother had decorated. And apart from everybody else in the house, you know, I needed my space, I guess. But type, 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 my door was closed and I just immersed myself in this mm -hmm. wonderful imaginary world. So I became, at that point, I began to develop a rich interior life. And I'm so thankful for it. If you know, the Lord will take the hardest moments of your life and move you through them in surprising ways. If I had realized, you know, that he was going to use that not only to get me through that time as a high schooler and young adult, but that he would bring it to fruition later in publishing. And those deep hurt feelings that I felt then, the anguish and the wrestling he's used in my writing. Because yeah. people's reviews have said sometimes uh, France writes with a rare depth of feeling. Mm -hmm. And that then, and then in turn, other people are able to connect with yes, in their own right. hurt, you yes. know, and just to see to, how the characters deal with it. Exactly. And I know for myself, I've certainly gotten inspiration and ideas mm -hmm. of how to handle a situation from mm -hmm. a book. You Isn't know, it just... amazing what fiction can teach us? Mm -hmm. And Jesus was the master storyteller. Right. And what is it, that one verse, I kind of chuckle if all the books in the world cannot contain right. everything that he said and did. Yes. So um, we're just a little part of that, but it's right. an important part. Yeah. And not to be taken lightly. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we're going to move into our, just the for fun, fun, rapid round. <laughs> and then we have a big announcement. Yay. But before that, before we do the rapid round, I want to ask, what are you working on right now? I'm and working on, up. oh yes, The Seamstress of Akady. Um, and I was wondering how to say that last word. Oh, Akady. I saw the cover. Well, Akady. if you, the okay. French for version, so I have this wonderful hair, heroine named Sylvie Gallant, but in French it's Sylvie Gallant. Oh. So it's totally different. And I have a secondary character that just uh, is my favorite. I think he's, he's has channeling a little red, red shirt vibe there. Okay. And I hope you just fall in love with his secondary character like I do that has the most fascinating name. So the Seamstress of Acadia is next set in Nova Scotia, which is the British name for it. It was Acadia to the French. Okay. 1755. But I'm actually finishing uh, my third Scottish novel for, for those who love um, that Georgian Scottish vibe that novel is set in 1775 and has an american bride and a scottish groom okay um interesting fascinating to me because i get to tell the story of the american revolution from the other side across the pond that's gonna be interesting yeah, i can't was, wait for both yeah i know <laughs> and i i um so that's coming down the pipe a couple more books for you so. okay all right um, so rapid round. Yes. An author I love is blank because blank. Uh, Lori Benton. She writes such detailed, uh, 
stories, yes. historical fiction She's in the so century good. I love. So, um, you and her both have the nature, outdoorsy, woodsy yes. thing going. Y'all, I just feel like I'm the plunging through the forest. Yes. Oh, I love that. You're right there on the heels yes. of Daniel Boone. Yes. <laughs> okay. Who or what made you laugh recently? Um, you. <laughs> <laughs> Only I can't remember why. Jenny's just delightful. Aww. If you're in her company long, you laugh. And, and laughter is good medicine. So Aww, there you thank go. thank you. Yes. That's also good. <laughs> okay. What dessert or treat have you been enjoying lately? Oh, my goodness. I said no to a big cookie that's peanut butter and fudge at the Mall of America a couple of days mm. ago. I'm trying to cut out sugar. But um, anything chocolate, I'm a fan. And recently, chocolate. I've been buying those little boxes of Andy's Mints, which I okay. used to serve as a waitress yes. at these historic inns and I'm just have one after dinner and it's okay. delicious. Okay, so your little tiny yeah. Andy little treat. Mint. Yes. Okay, very good. Um okay. What is your so let's move to like a Christmas. Is it still mm -hmm. July? I'm not sure, but yeah. it, it won't be by the time we uh, <laughs> post this. But what is your favorite ornament or decoration that you look forward to getting out at Christmas time? Oh my goodness. I try every trip I take like the Scotlander Wherever I go, I buy a special ornament because there's Christmas shops everywhere. Um, I think the current favorite is a little Downton Abbey tea set. It's on an ornament, a little Aww. silver tray. And I bought it when I finished um, my first, uh, second Scottish novel, The Rose and the Thistle. And it just means a lot to me. It brings did back a lot of memories. Did you enjoy the Downton Abbey uh, series? I did very much. And then in, when we were in Edinburgh last May, we got to go to the theater and see wow. see it, which was quite That's the treat. So cool. Yes, their theaters. Yes. Uh, Laura, France, and Pepper Basham took a group of readers mm -hmm. to Scotland um, and not too long ago. So we, that was, are y'all going again? We have an announcement <gasps> coming up. Okay. It's almost ready to go live. So, okay. Um, so anyway, thank the, Tea uh, and Quills. Mm -hmm. Tea and Quills Tour. Okay, so, so be, uh, be yeah. staying tuned to Laura's <laughs> website for that or her social media. Yes. Um, so I don't know if this will be before or after your tea and quills, but yeah. um, where are you going to be on Friday, December mm -hmm. 8th of oh, 2023 I'm so at 7 p.m.? I did. I tell you I love <laughs> Texas and I love Ginny. Oh. So we get Texas and Ginny. We are doing this. I can't believe the, the authors that are coming. I'll let Ginny give it's you the rundown. A Christmas for the books yes. is the name of it. And you can go to JennySnow.net forward slash Christmas 2023. Yeah. And Laura agreed to be our headline <laughs> author. Um, and we have three other featured authors that are also coming. Um, Jocelyn Green, Gabriel yeah. Meyer, and Becky Wade, local to Texas. Oh, I love so it. So three historical romance and one <laughs> contemporary romance. And I'm so excited. We, and it's going to be the most wonderful vin coffee-laden yes. venue, thanks to Jenny's brother. It's going to be at Inclusion Coffee in Arlington, mm -hmm. Texas, but it is a ticketed event and tickets are limited. Yeah. So yeah. give yourself and your best friend an early Christmas present it and is the, sign up right away. Get your sister, yes. your mom, your bookish friends, and we're just going to have a wonderful night. We're going to have dessert, coffee, conversation, um, some questions, some Q&A, yes. um, and some games, and it's just going to be a night. going to be a pre-Christmas bookish yes. celebration. You get your some yeah. Christmas shopping done, and you'll yes. have a chance to sign, and you're going right. to sign books. We're going to bring a little bling yes, to selfies go with and it. selfies and signatures. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, Thank you, Laura, so much for coming oh, to the Christmas event a, and for wonderful. doing this with me and for all your hard well, work. Well, it's been a treasure of my, what an hour, if we've, if we've gone an hour, it's a treasure of an hour. Thank you. Thank you so And thank much. you for watching. And uh, if you're interested, uh, go over on Patreon and you can find the, yes. um, the spoiler edition yes. there. All right. Have fun. Bye.